And a very big hello to all of our Star Vista Live cruisers out there. I'm your virtual cruise host, Jason, and welcome back to another edition of All Access Pass from Home. Obviously, we can't all be together on the ships, but we thought what a great opportunity to reach out and touch base with some of your very favorite stars and in their homes and, uh, and chat a little bit and bring that, that content to you. Uh, today, I'm honored to be sitting down with an absolute musical legend, founder, and original member of the Tramps. Everyone put your hands together for Mr. Earl Young. How are you, sir? My pleasure. M miss you guys, man. Yeah, but we miss you. How have you been? What's, what's going on? How you, how you keeping busy? Right, well, everything, everything's been good. Look, look, I'm always, I'm always having time to rehearse with my drums. I still got my drums, <laughs> you know, doing recording sessions here and there, and uh, looking at old videos. It was reliving. Yeah, we did a show. We, we, we did the HBO show, Big Little Lies. Yeah. You know, with Meryl Streep and them. Yeah. And, you know, you, a lot of people can still, they can still go and, you know, check it out. It was on HBO uh, season, season two, episode four. Is that, uh, is that what's keeping, is that what's keeping your, uh, your itch to get on stage at bay, being able to watch yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's tough. Uh, yeah. I, well, after I did need some time off, you know, you know, spend some time with the wife, you know. So me and Sylvie, you know, I don't, I don't get too much chance to be home. So this is kind of great. So I don't mind being, I don't mind being home. It's like a, a vacation at home. I'm glad, man. That's good for you. It, we were just talking a little bit before we jumped on, and you're about to have a birthday. You're you're just a young pup. You're about to yeah. Turn Man, I can't believe I look back. I said eighty. I can't believe I used to look at eighty as being old. Now eighty is young. You don't, yeah, right. You don't look remotely close to 80, first of all, and you don't perform as if you've lost even a single step. You know the reason why I look, whenever I come on the ship, like with y'all, yeah, I, look, I see people come from all over the world, man, and, and they give me high energy. I mean, I meet people from uh, Spain, and you know, and that's a great feeling, man. They come up to you and they say, yeah. I've been so dying to see the tramps, and this is a you know this is a great time. To see. So that's like that's like food feeding. Sure, I'm, I'm sure there's a, pressure's not the right word, but I'm sure there is a drive within you when people come from all over the world and oh my gosh that song or this song or that record. I'm sure the last thing in the world you could ever dream of doing is let them down. You want to give everything you can in that moment. I would imagine. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when I'm on when I'm on stage, I've been on stage all my life yeah. you know, since I was a, a teenager. So when I'm on stage, I'm at home. That's you know, I feel sure. at home because I'm used to being around thousands of people, and uh, everybody everybody is so cool. I you know most of the like most of the time when people talk when they talk to me, they, you know they have on their boots from they don't dug the boots <laughs> out of the closet, man. <laughs> You know, them high heels and uh, all the wigs. The and, goldfish swimming in there. <laughs> yeah, we take them, we take them back, we take them back to the good days. They always yeah. say, so many great memories with you guys, you know, and that makes us feel good. Well, listen, I want to take you back a little bit. Tell us a little bit about how, how you got into drumming and into your desire to be on stage and performing. Oh man, I hope you got enough time because we, I, we got nothing but time, Earl. <laughs> well, I started. I started out. I started out really in a studio as a drummer with Gamble and Huff, and I, I did all the recordings for, for the Sound of Philadelphia. I'm still doing that. I did all the Jacksons, the Whispers. I did the Old Jays, How Bum, the Bruno Lopes, all the R&B acts that has the Earl Young groove on them. So you know. But I worked in a studio with Gamble Huff for so many, you know, getting so many, I got like 50 gold albums. And, and by, working, by working in a studio, I, I wanted to put my own group together. So what I did, I went and got Jimmy Ellis, you know, when he's passed on, I miss this guy so much. Jimmy Ellis and I went and got, I used to be, I used to be with a group called The Volcanoes back in the, the 60s. I don't remember, people remember Stone Warren. And I went and got these two guys and what I did, I put these two groups together and I wanted a name that was so ridiculous that people would always remember. So I had names <laughs> like Bummy and the Bums, the Hobos. <laughs> and I finally wound all up. It, but all one thread, the Bums, the Hobos, <laughs> the Tramps. Yeah. <laughs> and I finally wound up with the Tramps, but there was another, there was another group at the time called Super Tramps. Exactly. So I had to put another M in it. So that's why there's <laughs> two M's spelled on our name. Got it. So that's how the Tramps got it. 
<laughs> together. And I heard this song, it was on the back of the coasters. I'll take myself back now, because we had 45s. On the back of a 45, there was a song called Zing with the Strings of My Heart on the back of Yakety Yak. So I heard this and I said, geez, I'm a bass singer. So I went, dear, when you smile at me, I heard a melody. But I, look, I made my own deal with Buddha, put the record out, it was a hit. The rest is history. But I've always had two, two careers, one as a drummer and one as a singer. Now, you ask me which one I prefer, it's like asking which kid you love the best. <laughs> you know, because, because when, one is not, when, when one is not working, I go with the other one. I go play. I go play my drums and do studio work. So I'm, I've been blessed to be a, to be in great health all my life. I've never been in the hospital, so I've been, you know, I try to take care of myself. That's you know, so I can keep on hanging out with you guys, man. Listen, be able to we appreciate get up on that, get up on that <laughs> ship and dance. Got to stay in shape. Amen to that. It, it's who who was influential? Who was influential on you? when you were just kind of getting into the game? Well, when you're young, all the acts, I mean, look, I have to go back. So look, I always go back, as far as the drummer's concerned, I always liked Louis Belson. Because Louis Belson was the first person that had double bass drum, and he mm -hmm. amazed me. And when you're talking about singers, I always have to go back, because everybody wants, everybody wants to be a temptation. Back then, I mean, yeah, we course. used to have house parties with the red and blue lights in the basement, and we used to dance to the Motown sound, you know, uh, Mary Wells, and all. Yeah. So that kind of, I said, this is something that I want to do. I said, geez, and I find, you know, and and I finally got, I finally got that break. I got a job at the Uptown Theater, which is like the Apollo Theater in New York City, and I played for all these acts like Jackie Wilson and Stevie Wonder, and. You know, my my career, man, has been so good to me. Yeah. You know, I had to, I had a chance to go on the road and tour with Stevie Wonder, but he was little Stevie Wonder. <laughs> he had our fingertips. He had our fingertips and Alfie back then when he was little Stevie Wonder. So I toured on the road with him, and you know, it's been great, man. You uh, you've had a lot of success too. I mean, you know, to your point, you. You've kind of led. I mean, you well, really, you've led multiple lives. Not only are you a singer and a drummer, but you're also a member of a group. But you also are widely, widely renowned. At to your point a moment ago, having played a lot of studio, having played a lot of tracks with a lot of people. I mean, behind yeah. you on the wall, you've got you've got accolades upon accolades upon accolades. Not to okay. mention that I got Fifty Cent, Mary J. Blige. Look, I played for the game, the rappers, the game, Little Young Jeezy, Wilson Pickett. B.B. King, I mean, I played for That's everybody. an incredible, that's an incredible everybody. gamut. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's incredible to play from, you know, so many different musical styles, but also ages, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's a testament to you and your ability. You I know, mean, when you take, you take Johnny Mathis and yeah. then you go to the OJs, then you go to the stylistic, you know, then you go to uh, Dusty Springfield. I mean, these are all <laughs> different artists and I play with they all different styles. Yeah. So that's what I do. I mean, I'm not a fancy uh, road drummer. I don't spin sticks, do solos. I do one thing. I yeah. stay and do groove. I make up different grooves for records. That's all I do. Make, so when I go in the studio, they ask me, Earl, here's a song. What groove can go with it? And I lay it out. Well, on top of that, and I, I know many people know this, but just in case they don't, you are you are renowned for having infallible rhythm. You are renowned for not needing a click track. There are very few drummers that can, that can pick a tempo and stay on a tempo regardless of what's going on around them for a whole, and you are renowned. I mean, musicians upon musicians, huge acts have spoken about your ability to walk in, no click and just, and click by the way, for people who don't understand it is, is the, the tempo in your ear, you don't need it. How have you always had that ability, or was that learned through playing with all these acts? Well, you know what? When I back in the seventies, they didn't even have clicks, right? Sure, I I, I, I understand that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we didn't, look if you're a drummer, you need a click track. You shouldn't be a drummer. You shouldn't be a drummer. <laughs> they didn't have drum machines. Yeah. So I was a human drum machine. They, you know, when I that's why, and I think that's the reason why I got so many jobs. It's not that I was the greatest drummer in the world, but I. I could keep time. I could play any kind of music, 
and I guess I was I was great to get along with. So you know, so, and that means a lot too. So it does. But keeping time is something that a lot of drummers, even the great ones, struggle with. Keeping time is not an easy thing. Well, you know what? This is what I do. I mean, most drummers they they go sure. for doing solos, and sure. the solos you don't have to be able to keep time. Yeah, I don't do solos. I do recording studio sessions. And that is about time. And the reason why, I tell you the difference between a studio drummer and a regular drummer. It's a big difference. A st like, for instance, a studio, a studio drummer, that's what they do. Not that they're better than a regular drummer, but the regular drummer, all he do, he wants to be seen, play drums, spin yeah. stick, thousand drums. I had my Show set, drummer. I had my set, my set is 50 years old, same set. You know, Sigma Sound Studio brought, they brought me a set and it made specially for me in the, in the studio. So this is, the, so, and like people, people, another thing, people always ask me, what's the difference between Motown sound and Philly sound? That's a good question. Motown has great musicians. Philly has great musicians. But the difference is Philly is that Motown are in-house musicians. They only play for Motown. Yeah. We play for anybody that comes through the door that got a check, <laughs> walk through the door, tell me what you want. Yeah. And you got yeah. it. You, you, they want a hit record. Look, look, I played for Motown artists like Eddie Kendricks and, and the Jacksons. Sure. So I, I consider myself a little bit of Motown too. Sure, yeah. Well, and rightfully so. Um, take so when you guys, when the tramps are formed and, and you guys are did you know what your sound was going to be? Did you know you were jumping into the disco game or, you know, that, and, and, and you weren't just disco, but I mean, did you envision that or what was your initial vision? Was it, was it that, or did you have a different uh, avenue that you were looking at? Well, well when we started out, we just, there, there, there was no disco. Yeah. When we started out, we were R&B because Zing with the Strings of yeah. Our Heart is an R&B song. And we had, we had a, uh, uh, where do we go from here? Different songs that we travel overseas with before Disco Inferno came out. Mm -hmm. And what happened when we signed with Atlantic Records, and I would say when we put out Where Do We Where the Happy People Go? And because Hold Back at Night is really not a disco yeah. song. No. But what happened was when we got into Saturday Night Fever, Saturday Night Fever was is really like a disco movie, and, and that was our home club. 2001 Odyssey in New York yeah. City. That was our base home club. Yeah. So when that record came out, that record went all over the world and it took us all over the world. So we got to be known as a disco group, which I didn't really, you know, want to do because it hurts us going R&B. Sure. So R&B, like, like a lot of R&B shows, they don't know us, you know, because disco and R&B, you know, it, it goes together yeah. in some ways, but it's a different kind of audience yeah. that you attract. Sure. I mean, Saturday Night Fever it was monumental in so many ways, and it, you, you got a little award there sitting next to you that uh, <laughs> some success oh, you might have. My, my grandma, I have three of these. I know, I know. I two, yeah, I have two for, for I, I, matter of fact, I won two in, in Saturday Night Fever. I won for MFSB for KG in the same movie, I stood there with one in one hand, one in the other hand, you know, <laughs> at the awards and, and for being a singer and a drummer. And the other one is for the best instrumental uh, MFSB. So I'm, I've been lucky. Yeah. But, but this is my pride well, here. Look, Musicians Hall of Fame? Inducted into the Musicians Hall of Fame with Garth Brooks. Yeah. You know, and hey, that was, that was one of the best times in my life. The Musicians Hall of Fame is, is interesting to me too because they've, the whole point of it, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the whole point of it is that it, it ignores genre and it purely goes for influential and inspirational and talented musicians, yeah. period. It's not about yeah. whether you're country Absolutely. or R&B or this or that, or Absolutely. it's just right down the middle. And what, what, really saved, what really helped me for getting inducted into, because I was different. Mm -hmm. I, I'm the one that created the four on the floor that yeah. this could be. So that, that made me a little different, you know, having something that stands out, you know, what they call the riff. And they have an award coming up 
you know, uh, for, for everybody that has a riff. A riff is something that you play different. And I'm, I'm hoping I can get that award next year because they had talked to me about it. So that's a big, that's, that'll be another big step if I can get that award, if I can win that one. So, and, and actually I was gonna, I wanted to talk about this. I'm really glad you brought it up. Please explain for people that don't understand, uh, you're regarded as the inventor of the, the for lack of better terms, the disco rock drum and, and the four on the floor. Uh, explain to people what that is. Well, the four on the, 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 four on the floor, uh, I've always admired all the drummers because I look, I, I'm a musician. I love the Memphis drummers. I look, I love the California drummers. I love the Purdy in New York. I love the Motown drummers, but I wanted to do something a little different from everybody to create my own sound. So I didn't want to copy anybody's style. So I'm a person that like to dance, you know? <laughs> I like slow music, but, but I'm a dancer. So what I did, I put together a four on the floor, which means four beats on the bass drum. That, mm, 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 mm. And uh, the hi-hat. Yeah. I used the hi-hat that And that, that, was, that was called the four on the floor. And the high and the high hat, the high hat eighth notes, two and the four on the snare, and the, and that gave me that gave me my own sound. And I I usually record it. I record all my songs. People don't know, but I record all my songs at like a one twenty speed, you know. And a lot of the producers don't know that I do that, but I do that <laughs> because the disc jockeys can mix yeah. in all my songs in that one speed. That's why the deep days love me so much. Because yeah, and the hi hat, right? Your symbols, your 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 yeah, symbols. You mix up the hi hat yeah, yeah. at one at one twenty speed, and I act and I look because the love I lost was a ballad at mm -hmm. first. The love I lost, I picked it up and said, "Look, let's put it here," and I put it into that four four group, and that 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 in bad love is what put the blue notes into disco. If it wasn't for these two songs, yeah. they would never do disco yeah. because they're not a disco group. But I made them disco. And that's the four, that's the, now Bohannon, Bohannon used something to call a four on the floor too. He used a bass drum mm -hmm. uh, earlier with, the, with you know, with the, the thump of the bass drum, but he didn't use the hi-hat yeah. like that. So it wasn't mixable, but it was a great dance record. But the, but the disc jockeys love that hi-hat sound. Yeah. They, can, they can mix that. And that helped us so, a lot of our records because if it wasn't for the DJs yeah. out here, I don't think we would have really made it because the DJs and the clubs, we worked every club in New York, every little little hole in the wall. We didn't care. We went <laughs> yeah. because the DJs loved us. You know, we worked every club. Must be, I think every little bar had a little disco ball. They, they and, yeah, ball. right. Yeah. Just they for when the tramps were coming in. Yeah. They drop a disco ball in there, man, and say, okay, I got a disco. Open the door. Bring the check. <laughs> as long as the check cash is right. <laughs> yeah, we don't care where we work, man. We, we ain't care. And, funny. you know, you, you've you obviously, uh, you've seen a lot of, um, I mean, at one point, I had, you know, I, I interviewed Casey from Casey and the Sunshine Band when we were on the last disco cruise, and he was talking a lot about how, you know, when, when disco got trashed and when everyone said disco was dead and all of that. And, yeah. Obviously, it's it's garbage. It's you know you can't kill disco, but what's it like to see it? Uh, not that it ever went anywhere. I'm not saying that, but certainly the revival of of the popularity of a lot of that music. It it, it never went away, but it certainly started to climb back up in terms of its popularity. That's got to be fun to 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 hear and see not only the tramps but also all your friends and you know the disco crews. You know, and so many people having a good time. It's got to be kind of cool to see. Oh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, we toured. We toured on a bus tour, great tour with KC. I mean, KC and us, we, you know, great friends. Yeah, yeah. And this, the, the, I guess it's a new surge of disco. I don't know, but yeah, there is. It seems like it seems like everybody uh, wants to, wants to reminisce and go back because most of our most of our audience most of our audience is is uh, you know my age and maybe a little younger. So we have a certain age limit. And and now we now since the uh, uh, disco took a big merge again, a lot of the younger generation is picking up on because they yeah. say, oh, how can I stand to that? 
So they we we're getting the younger audience now too. And it, uh, it was interesting because I was talking to someone about it, and they said that in an off way, Bruno Mars, some of his some of Bruno Mars' big hits over the last few years have kind of an older nostalgic feel to them. And that has helped a lot of a younger generation of music listeners transition and find more of what is considered old school or, you know, the older, you know, the disco and the R&B hits. Yes, he did. Well, he's doing more R&B. Yes. A lot of R&B stuff. Not too much of disco stuff, but... Uh, no, but it has a retro like, sound. Like cross over a little yeah. bit. But he's basically R&B, old school R&B. We're strictly dance. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's our whole thing is... is it's like, I don't like to see people sitting down. <laughs> I mean, I don't see him sitting down at many tramps concerts. I don't want to see nobody sitting down. I, I mean, I mean, even on the ship, even in the big room, people sitting down. That's yeah. great. But I like to see people, we like to make people feel like they're back in the day when they were young and they didn't have any kids and they were just doing their thing and they can just shout and make noise with us yeah. <laughs> and put a drink in their hand, have a good time and come up with us and tell us, man, you make me feel so good. That takes me back so many years. You know, I don't want you just sitting there like this looking at me. Yeah, right. I, I want you to be a part of what I'm doing. The arms get crossed. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. I want you to be a part of, of what we, I want you to feel like yeah. your family. That, you know, I want you to be comfortable to, to scream, to holler, to have a good time. And that gives us energy. Listen, there's a reason we like you guys up on the pool deck. You know, that's the that's the party spot on the. Yeah, on the, up there. yeah that's that's the that's yeah, the party we, spot. Yeah, we like that, man. Because people look. First of all, people can leave when they want to, come back, go get a drink when they want to. Half of them be, be tore up anyway. They can yeah. four or five shots. <laughs> they ready to make some noise. You know, to jump in the pool or something. Yeah. So, you know, we be up there having fun, man. It's kind of the club feel. It's kind of has a club feel up there. You know, it's an outdoor kind of club, set. But. Yeah. And we got the UGO orchestra behind us, man, our homeboys. UGO, they, baby. You know, and they make us sound good because we great friends with them. And every time we have them, I say, I don't worry about nothing. Yeah. No, it, we, I actually did an interview with uh, Henry and, and, a, and a few of the, the guys and gals. And they're, they're such a... There's such a feather in the cap of for Starvest Alive in terms of the the Soul Train crews and the uh, and the disco crews. They really are. I mean, they're world class. They're phenomenal. You know what? I I tell you one of I tell you one of the great things is when I do when I do the ship. Mm -hmm. Well, when we do the ship, I wanted, I'm I'm working with all the people that I recorded. I mean, yeah. I mean, like I haven't seen the Whisper since I did that record Bingo. <laughs> you know, I did that hit Bingo, and I haven't seen them because we don't have we. We only did one R and B show, yeah. so I ran into the, the twins, man. You know, and it's, it's those such, boys are crazy. It, it, it's such, it, you know, it's it's more fun to us because because I I see the stylistics. I did all that yeah. record, and when I run into <laughs> these guys, man, it's like I said, geez, I was a drummer, and I recorded all these guys. Now here I'm up here working, singing right beside them. Yeah, yeah that's funny. That's that's odd because. <laughs> You know, because I started out just recording them, yeah. like all the OJ stuff, you know, and the work is right beside them. You know, it's, it's, I guess it's like a family growing up. Sure. Well, that's that's what people talk about with these cruises a lot, you know, and it's funny because when guests talk about it, it's a family reunion for the guests, right? Because every year a lot, we get a over approximately 50 percent, give or take on the cruise. On some cruises, it's closer to 70 and 80 percent have done it before. So a lot of people are coming back to the ship to do it again, you know, once a year. But people don't recognize sometimes how much it's the same thing for the artists, as you're talking about. You know, you guys have known each other for, for 50, 60, oh, 70 yeah. years, yeah, some of you guys. Those days. Oh, God. And the, style, the stylist grew up on the same street. You know, we've been <laughs> friends in the Bruno. With how, how we, we've been friends for years. So, But I, but, but, but I even run into people that come, like, from London and say, I was on the last tour. I came back. Yeah. And that really make us feel good when they say, Look, yeah. I seen y'all last year and we're back again. You know, I got tickets. <laughs> I'm going to get tickets next year because I love this disco. I love this disco crew because it makes us feel so young. We leave these kids home and we're having a great time. So. <laughs> when you go on stage now and, and you outed yourself by saying that you're about to turn 80, when you go on stage now, does it feel 
how different does it feel from when you were going on stage when you were in your 20s and you know teens and in those younger years do you still have the same energy do you have to get up for it i mean i having known you for a couple of years now you seem like you are 100 percent jacked up ready to go all the time <laughs> <laughs> and and but there's got to be a little bit of a all right let's go um, is it the same feeling yeah, well, first of all, I always tell people how old I am because I want people that's younger than me to feel like, well, be that old, shut up. I <laughs> yeah, I better get out. Yeah. You know? But before I go on stage, I might have, look, I might have a little pain in my leg or I might be tired or something. But as soon as I hit that stage I get, away. And, and the band starts to hit and the people start to scream yeah. The pain don't come back until after you come off stage. Then I say, oh, God, now I'm going to play yeah, right. now I'm, It all now catches I'm up at once. Go, <laughs> I'm going to go sit down for a while. Now, you, you know, I get so much into, into the audience and having a great time. Yeah. You, you know, don't nothing hurt. Is it, is it weird not being able to perform right now as we go through all of this? Uh, quarantine. I know yeah. you said it's fun to be home, but it's got to be a little well, weird. You know, one of the things that being a leader of a group, you know, I'm the leader yeah. of the champs, and I feel responsible for them because they're like my family. Yeah. You know, when they're out of work, you know, when they're out of work, I feel like I'm out of work, and because they, they like they have, they're like my brothers. Sure. And you know, I like to keep I to keep my group working all the time, being a leader of the group. You know. Yeah. And, and matter of fact, the guys, the guys with me now, they've been with me over. Way over 30 years because the original group broke up in 1979. Yeah. The original guys, you know, one passed. Yeah. And and the original guys, they wanted to go overseas and work. And I, I said, well, I'm going to stay home. You know, if I can't make it here, I'm not here. I'm not going to go anywhere. So they they left and they went over there. And I put these guys together. They've been me over nearly almost 35 years. So we tight. That's why yeah. when we go up there and dance, we've been doing this for a long time. People say, <laughs> Man, these guys have danced, but we've been dancing for over 40 years, man. We've been going to <laughs> 40 we, we can close our eyes and do this. The clap slide, yeah, it's all yeah, part of the routine. Yeah. Yeah, we've been doing this for 40 years. We did this in the chilling circuit, in the little bar. <laughs> <laughs> With the wet basement floor, we get dressed in. Right? Yeah. So, you know. Is there, a, is there a period in your life, uh, performance-wise, not personally, but performance-wise, that you look back on and, and you think that was, is there a heyday for you? I mean, was it, was it when, you know, Disco Inferno first came out? Was it that Saturday Night Live era? Or is it later now that more, now that, now that you've been able to enjoy it as long as you have? You know what? I, I always look at the fact of what I did then was great, but I want to move on. I want to climb more mountains. But I always, I always have the respect for the people that helped me to get where I am today. I, I, I was able to get help from Oprah Rempe on her shows. You know, I did the Ricky Lake show, or Wendy Williams show, uh, the Allens. Uh, so these are great things to me because these are people that helped me. And people that helped me, I already respect. Just like the, the tour, the ship. That's a great help to me because it lets people know that we're still alive, we're still dancing, we're still kicking, and we're still here. The faces change, but the music stays the same. So sure. I appreciate, I don't have a special time. I, I, I just have the respect for the people that put me where I am today and helping me today to even climb more mountains. That's important. I think that that undoubtedly can help you stay grounded too, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely, because you can go... You know, right I, back down. I think you can also go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I no, never, you're not. But yeah, I never consider myself better than anyone else. I don't care how successful yeah. I ever been. I still, I, I still go out and check and, and talk to the guy that picks up my trash every day and see how he, you know, see how he's doing and, and is, he, is he okay or do he need anything? Because to me, people are people. Nobody's no better than anybody else. I don't care what the race you are. Or, or or political than whatever, we all the same. Yeah, you know, even even now with this virus going around, you know. Yeah, this is a this is a crazy time. You know, it's it's definitely something unique, and it it's it it takes uh it doesn't. I mean, I know there's a lot of reports that say a lot of things, but you know, frankly speaking, it doesn't care if you're. 
it doesn't care a lot about you. The virus takes you as you are, and it, it hits each one of us individually and uniquely, but it's still, you know, no one's immune to it that we know of really at this point. So, uh, yeah, it, I think it's going to cause people to, to really think coming out of it on the other side. You know, it's, it hopefully will unite some people around, you know, a common cause, I guess. Well, I, I, I would say I owe a lot to my wife, Sylvia, because not only does she keep me grounded, she takes care of me, makes sure that I, you know, that I get rest, that I eat right, you know, and, oh, get that mask on, get out of it, you know, <laughs> make sure that I do the right thing. Make sure I do the right thing, you know. Because Listen, she, we love Sylvia because she keeps you in line. That's the, yeah, I'll just put that out there for everybody. She, she got the whip, man. I'm yeah, Sylvia's got to keep you. You're, you're behind the line. Yeah, I think I, I like I always say. I don't think I would be here uh, right today if it wasn't for her because she makes sure that, that I take my little, you know, my little pill I to take and everything. And that's important to have somebody yeah. like that. It I is. think that's why, you know. I, when it comes time to go to work, I enjoy it so much. Sure. Well, you were also, we were talking before we got on here. And, you know, I think what's one of the interesting things, I, I was talking to the Jacksons. I was talking to uh, Marlon, Tito, and Jackie. And uh, we were talking, we were kind of joking that if, if the virus has done one thing, certainly beyond all else, and that's that it's taken the most talented amongst us and you don't really have a stage to be on. Earl, Earl Young doesn't have a stage to go perform on. So you find yourself doing stuff like building cabinets, mowing lawns, <laughs> cleaning out, you know, cleaning out back rooms, and oh, everybody's yeah. normal right now. Everybody's normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My yard, my grass, and my shed say, "Get, get out of here! I'm clean." <laughs> yeah, Go yeah, find we're good. Man. We're good. To do. <laughs> Go find a stage <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Go sing "Disco Inferno" to the dogs. Like, come on, just <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> That's so uh, cool. It is. It's. Uh, have you? Do you have a pretty extensive honey do list? Do you have a lot of stuff to work on around the house? You staying busy? Yeah. Well, I'm in. I'm in the process now of, of Sylvia and I putting a book together. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna write. We trying to put together a, 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 you know, for my career and how I got started and everything. You know. And That's really cool. Is that yeah. something you just started because of this, or did you already have that moving before this? Well, we've just thing? been working on a little bit at a time. So as soon as I, if, if I can find a publisher that's willing to back, you know, it would be great. But we, but we've been doing a little bit at a time because I want to get all the details in because a lot yeah. of everybody been asking me to, to write a, book, you know, to do a book on the sound of Philadelphia. Sure. Because all, all the musicians in Philadelphia are all gone. All the musicians have passed. All the singers like Billy Paul. You know, all of all my top Teddy Pay, all of everybody's gone. So I'm like the, the lone wolf. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank God for Sylvia to keeping you young and healthy, Wolf. Yes, yes, he's yeah, my baby. Um, so in a time like this, how do you keep your chops up? How do you practice every day? Do you play a bit, or what do you do to keep uh, to keep your chops? Well, I do practice. I, but what I do, I do practice every morning just a little bit, just just to keep. Like, like, you know, just to keep my wrist going, you know, so I don't get stiff in here because I might get a call anytime yeah. to come and do a session. So you always have to be, being prepared is, is one of the best things in life, is being prepared for a situation. So if they, when they call me, I, uh, I'm ready. You know, if they don't call me, yeah. I'm still ready. You're still ready. <laughs> so, and you know, yeah, you I always practice and I, I exercise, I exercise, you know, try to stay in shape. And the good things in life that keep you here is what we try to do. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, do you have any, or do you have a sweet tooth? Do you have anything like that you have to battle? Don't mention it, man. <laughs> man. I'm a cookie monster, man. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a cookie monster. I'm a so cookie monster. And Sylvia's just off tater camera tater. laughing. I know she is. Yeah. She, she's a tater chip person. <laughs> <laughs> Cookies, Sweet, and sweets and savories. In yeah, <laughs> always in this house. Man. The, now the serious question, Earl. The serious question: What's your go-to cookie? My go-to cookie: chocolate chip. Uh, like homemade chocolate chip or or store-bought? Well, either way. Sometimes Sylvia she cook she cook you know with, yeah. with the walnuts and got little pecans in them Ooh. and she cooks. You know she likes to bake. She's a baker. So you're so, you're a chocolate chip cookie guy. I'm a chocolate yeah. chip cookie. Give me any kind of chocolate chip, but put put some walnuts or pecans in there. Okay. And give me a, look, and give me a good movie. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. 
just a tray yeah, of we, cookies in a movie. <laughs> and we go, we actually, actually, we go, to, we go to movies if we can. Every every Friday, we call it date night. Oh, every nice. Friday, we go. Oh, that's movies. sweet. We even go see bad movies. You know, just yeah. be going out, just be going out on a Friday night, and oh, that's, that's our cute. night. You know, so I can't go out now. So yeah. You know. Do you do you try to sneak cookies into the theater? Tell me the truth. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you know that? Yeah, I got it. I have it in my pocket, man. <laughs> I even put burgers. I even put a burger in my pocket a couple of times man, because they don't have them in there. Who so. sneaks a burger in their pocket? Early I put a burger in my pocket, man. Look, so, look, look. I'm, like, I'm all old school. I'm all old school, man. Sylvia is shaking her head at you right now. I know it. I can feel it on the <laughs> yeah. other side. She's going, this yeah. man, this man right here. <laughs> Snuck a burger in. God, I love you. <laughs> you can come say hi, Sylvia. Come on, don't be shy. I don't look my best. You always look your best. <laughs> How are you, my dear? I have my work clothes on. <laughs> you look great. You look great. So when he sneaks a burger into a movie theater, do you chastise him just like a regular wife would a regular husband? Or do you, is he, you know, I know he's all young, but I hope you slap his wrist. I hope you. Well. She got one too. I got one too. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're meant to be. That means you're meant to be. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I, you sneak burgers in? Is that the craziest thing you've snuck in? Have you snuck other stuff? Be honest. Um, we may have even did uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh wow, y'all are serious about this. This is not, <laughs> you are taking full meals into movies. <laughs> I like, what What kind of movies have you guys seen recently? Anything you'd like to, rec to recommend to people? We haven't seen anything oh, recently. Not, you before know what I mean, before this, before the nonsense. What, what the last movie, I think the last movie is before the cruise. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's been a so, few yeah, minutes. That was, oh, it might have been, um, oh, I can't even think. It's okay. Oh, it might have been, um, what's the movie with uh, Will Smith? Um, oh, uh, um, uh, now you got Gemini Man? No, the one with Will Smith and the, and, uh, Oh, God. Now we're gonna play this game. Now we're all gonna show our age. It must, right? it must, uh, been, it must have been bad. I don't remember. Yeah, right. No, it was a sequel. Mm. Actually, oh, bad. bad boys. Bad, bad boys. boys with uh, Martin Lawrence. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. That's yeah, cool. uh, that, was, that was a great first movie. I like action guys? movies. She like love. She like the <laughs> love pictures, man. Sit romantic there. Romantic comedy. Romantic <laughs> movies. I, 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 I have, to, movies, I have really. to sit through this, man. I have to sit through this romantic comedy. Believe me. I do. What, what have you been watching recently? Any movies recently? I mean, at home, uh, while you guys are home, are you watching anything? Well, we've been watching separate TVs. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching old reruns. I'm, look, Got I'm it. an old cowboy fan, man. I'm, look, I go watch The Good, Bad, and Ugly. That's my nice. Rambo. I watch all the old nice. actors. Ain't nothing, long, I'm putting nothing on them unless you go much to, you know. Uh, Netflix stuff. and Hulu and all that, yeah. I'm How a long? cowboy fan, man. Look, give me my cowboys, man. I grew That's up, funny. I grew up on old cowboy movies. Roy Rogers. How? Wow. Yeah, those are old cowboy movies. Yeah. I don't watch them anymore, but I grew up on those. You grew up yeah. on them. I got it. The, the funny thing is, we have like 4,000 movies in our basement. Oh, my goodness. And do we ever go and look at them? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. But you have them. But you have them. <laughs> then we collect what, they, what, they did, what happened when, when Blockbusters was selling out. Yeah. You know, we, yeah, yeah, we bought a lot of the old VCRs. For a dollar, yeah. They're yeah, like, here, take off. A dollar. So yeah. We just bought as much as we couldn't put them in, you know. Now I'm trying to get rid of them. Now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> wanted, not even 25 cents. Nobody wants them. Yeah. How long have you guys been married? Um, 40, 40, 41 years. 41, 41 years. 41 Earl, years. you're not supposed to think about that, Earl. You're just supposed yeah. to. 41, 41 years. Just, well, you know, I was, I was counting the three years. That we were together. People don't ah, count, gotcha. gotcha. They don't count them extra years. That's the battle years, you know. They don't <laughs> yeah, count yeah. Until you get married. That's the figuring it out years. Yeah, I, I count the battle years too, you know. <laughs> Give the know each years. Other. Okay, Sylvia, this one's just for you. We're not asking Earl. Earl's got to be quiet. Just for you, Sylvia. What's the secret to forty years of marriage to that guy? To this guy. Yeah, to that guy. Well, just let him think that he's getting away with whatever he wants to get away with. Oh, <laughs> she threw me under the bus. Yeah, oh. or she knows you, or she knows you. Just let him think he's, yeah, let him think he's in control. Let him think, 
And now, Earl, it's your turn. Sylvia can't answer. Earl, what's the secret to 40 years with that lovely young lady? What you do, be quiet when she's saying and, and agree on it. Got it. Just smile and nod. And I said, yeah, that's right. That's right. Because, yeah. because you ain't going to win. I said, yeah, that's right. Then you say, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I know you must know that. Yeah, I'm, I'm five old. years. I'm five years in. Yeah, I, I'm five years in. So I'm still, I'm still new in our marriage, but we're definitely figured it out day to day. And yeah, it, 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 that was my three years of breaking in time. Yeah, know? exactly. You don't want to argue. Okay, honey, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's Sylvia. Are you having to keep him busy right now during this time, or is he managing to stay busy with his yard and his tool shed out well, there? Well, yeah, he's he's totally busy with his yard. He's got, got it. A, yeah, I'm back Fences up. to make I'm and back up. fences to mend. Yeah, I do it myself, man. I don't call people in. Look, That's awesome. I did these things before I got into the music, you know. Be careful I, with I, those man, hands. Did, you know, I had jobs, so yeah. I didn't make it useful. What, you know? what, what type of jobs, Earl, did you have before you became the Earl Young? I used to be a printer. I, used to, I you know, I used, to, I used to, I used to do printing. You know, printing out invoices and and things like that. Going into that's what I wanted to. That's what I really wanted to do. And a uh, little little DJ and not not great, but uh, <laughs> small. Yeah, yeah. base basement parties. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with the red and blue lights. <laughs> oh right, yeah. I used to do DJs. I wasn't that wasn't that good, but you know they didn't have to mix and stuff. You just put a record on. You know. And it, it, actually, in terms of music, do you, when you, I know you said you, you know, you keep your wrists limber and obviously you're ready to go at any time. Do you still create new music or do you pretty much just on the call for other artists? Um, but I mean, well, today, you, today is a little harder than it was back in yeah. the day because everybody is cutting music technology in their basement. Yeah. You got thousands of thousands of people in one city cutting in their basement and trying to make a record deal. So t today, if you don't have a young person that you know that you can double up with to bring yeah. you up to this era, you know they put the record out. I yeah. mean, just like just like they might hire um, a rapper to go on your record, then the rapper gets popular on it, it makes you popular. Then you can yeah. put your own record out. But for you to go out and just put a record out by yourself, it's very hard today without without the assistance of uh, somebody that's popular in the music. Yeah, Earl and so and so, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe maybe Garth Brooks is my friend. He might help me out a little bit. <laughs> I gotta sing some country. I gotta sing some country stuff. You man. said you like the Cowboys. You like the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. I, I, look, look, I had a great time down in Memphis, man. You know, I, uh, you know, I go down there a lot. I, I like country music. Too. Look, I'm a musician. I like, I like all music. I like rap music. You know, sometimes I don't agree with what they say. Sure. But I like the music sometimes, sure. you know. I listen to everything because I have to. Because I, look, I did, like I said, I got 50% here. And I got yeah. a lot of money with him on, on a lot of rap stuff. Yeah. So uh, you can't say, I don't like this. I don't. If you were sure. music, you'd be out here starving if you did that. Sure. Sylvia, this one's for you. Um, if, if, if you guys have been married 40 years or so, that means you guys got married after the heyday of the you know the Saturday Night Fever, so did you know? Did you know his music? Did you know his? Did you know all about Earl Young and the Tramps w when you met him? When I met him, I had no idea who he was, and that's the best. And on a fluke, I went to a club, and it just so happened they were performing, and he pulled me on stage. <laughs> that's an old musician trick right there, and you fell for it. <laughs> And he, and he sang Zing with the Strings of My Heart to oh. me. No, I stopped the show. That's a home run right there. I said, man, and she is fine. I stopped the whole show <laughs> and brought her up there with me. That's a home run right there. And you, fell for, it, home run, you fell for it, Sylvia. <laughs> <laughs> You know, though, it's something to be said, and, and, and uh, Earl, I'm sure you can appreciate this. You know, if she knew exactly who you were and if she had been following you around, you know, the, it, it puts a little question mark into why does she want to, why is she marrying me? But if she didn't even know who you were, that's a big testament. You know, that, that means she fell in love with you yourself, not, not the image of you or the idea of you. And that's a cool thing. That's wonderful.
It is, man, because like she didn't go to, she didn't actually go out to nightclub and she just wanted to, she was in the neighborhood and she just wanted to go out somewhere to have some fun. And she ran to me one time and I just came to the school, so she came back. So I don't know whether she was following me. I don't know. I, I kind of think she was kind of following me because. It was the guitar player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could have been. It's always the guitar player. It's always the guitar player. <laughs> but I'm glad, I'm glad she did. Because, hey, that's, that was so cool. Yeah, 40 years. That's wonderful. That's uh, 40 yeah. years in this business, too. Yeah, I mean, we have ups and downs. We went through we everyone. Went through some, we went through some ups and downs where there wasn't no jobs, no, you know. And but my wife is my wife is a chemist by trade. That's what she does. She's a chemist. She chemist. Does, she does. Yeah, she's she's a top chemist. Runs a, runs her own plant here, <laughs> you know. So she's top number one chemist in the food and beverage industry. I make what? Like you make, you're a flavor chemist. Wow, that's very cool. Are you into mixology and all that? I mean, with drinks and beverages, or is it mostly? No, with, like, with, with uh, oils, essential oils. Oils and essential oils. It's the Whoa. like what they use to put in yeah like, soda and totally. My wife and I are coming to stay with you guys because she's a fanatic on all things food. So Earl, we're on our way. Uh, so she didn't, she didn't, look, look, she didn't need me for no star them because she had her own thing going, you know, when I, when I met her, she was, she was one of, you know, had this plant, you know. That's wonderful. So. Wow. What, uh, so I asked Earl about his cookies, so now I get to ask you about your, about your potato chips. What's your go-to potato chip, Sylvia? Well, it's either Lay's potato chip or Just basic? Potato chip. Yeah. Let, just Lay's straight classic. Yeah. No flavor in there. You like the classics. No yeah. flavors. Is that because you've been around flavor your whole life and it's been your job, so now you don't <laughs> want any flavor? You just... It could be. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll take no flavor, please. No flavor is better. I'd like water and some Lay's potato chips. <laughs> May, do you still do that? Are you, are you retired now or do you still do it? Oh, no, I'm still... I'm, they won't still let me retire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I've wow, that's fantastic. They've been company for 47 years. And do you work with major food producers and food production, or are you um, in the, is it well, independent? Well, it's a family-owned business that that sells to big businesses yeah, like Pepsi, um, Kraft, McCormick. These are all our customers. Got it. There's a picture that Earl really wants. What's the yeah, picture? I know. Get <laughs> that picture. You know, because I'm I'm always proud of her. No, she's proud yeah. of me. But I'm proud. I'm proud of her because she's been here. She's doing this job. Near 50 years. So that is so cool. So she moves. Let me see if you can see it. Yeah, bring you in a little closer. Oh, yeah. That's so you in the lab. A little higher. Yeah. Bring it up a tiny bit. Bring it up a tiny bit. Up, 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 up. There it is. That's you in the lab. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. This is my machine. <laughs> that's fast. So you're just, you're creating flavors then. You're creating flavor profiles and, and finding out what different oils, how they create. These Sorry, Earl, this is no longer about you. You can actually <laughs> go, now, <laughs> Earl, go cut the so, grass or something. Oh, that's great. <laughs> for, that's... for instance, orange, the, the oil is in the, in the skin of the fruit. Yes, so ma'am. we take that oil and we'll blend it with something else and make another flavor out of it. This is, that, that, it's almost musical, right? I mean, it's creativity. It's it's a creative family. You guys have a, a, a tie, a tie that binds in the middle. You're both in very creative industries. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm proud. I'm I, I'm proud of her because she's 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 very important on her job. But she she just said, "Why well, this kind of work?" I said, "Well, you got an important job. You know, you got your own office. You got all these employees under you, and and, and she never takes it serious. You know, and and." Uh, Seems like you should. You said you, Earl, I you said, amen. I mean, Earl was saying that you like to bake. Do you experiment at home then? Do you get to play with different flavors yeah, and sometimes ideas? Sometimes I'll bring home some of the oils and put it in my cake batter. <laughs> Earl, do you get to be the tester? Are you like, no, nah, yeah. nah, babe, babe, I'm that one didn't work, babe. <laughs> I'm all, always testing. How does this? I said, it's pretty good. It might need a little of this and that. Yeah. It, it might need a little flavor. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's phenomenal. Well, listen, you guys are you guys are two of my favorites, and we, we love you guys. And and Thank you know, you so you're, much, you're such a big part of what we do. Too. And and uh, you know, obviously, and, and I'd love to ask you both this. Matter of fact, we're obviously everything's everybody's going through something unique here with the with COVID, and everybody's experiencing it in a, in a unique way. You know, some are being hit a lot harder than others. Uh, some are paying a bigger price than others. Um, I'd ask you then very broadly you know what would you say to your fans out there and the folks that are watching this that that love you guys and are maybe going through some tough times do you have any messages for the, the folks out there yeah first you know first thing i do well, first thing i just want to take time to uh to thank all the doctors and nurses and, and everybody in healthcare that's that's making that's sacrificing or you know their life where they could to try to help others yeah. And I even put videos on, on Facebook about people, you know, wearing their masks, their gloves, and glasses, because the life that they save not only be mine, but it be their own. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people have taken heed to that. That's a daily message from me to Facebook. That's what To be safe. Amen. Amen. Sylvia, what about you? I know you're... you're uh, you're, you know, experiencing all of a sudden you've got a husband who's home all the time now. So you're going through it in your own way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> any messages for all the folks out there? Well, I just want them all to be safe and take heed not to take chances to go out just because something is open doesn't mean you have to go out there. Just, you know, just be safe. Uh, that's and listen. thank all the, uh, the, the police officers, the firemen, the EMTs, they're doing a great job and I yeah. hope they can, you know, they can continue to do that. It's interesting because I've seen some, uh, I've seen some people, my, my grandfather told me when I was very young, uh, and he always said this to me, he said, you know, what makes some people happy in life is to be unhappy. And mm -hmm. that's a message I had to under, I didn't understand it when I was young, but I understand it. I started to understand it as I became an adult and like, you know, it's, it's ingrained in me now, you know, I see people, uh, that are kind of blowing that whole concept. They're like, oh, well, these nurses and doctors, they took that job. This is their job. Why are we thanking them for doing their job? It, it <laughs> blows my mind. Like, what are you taught? Are you kidding me? Yeah, we, they took their job on a normal day. They didn't take their job in the middle of a pandemic yeah, to go show up and, and face down, you know, potentially a deadly virus. And I don't know. I, I couldn't agree more with you. I think that the people that are out there doing what they're doing are selfless. You know, we've lost, uh, people are struggling. You know, we've lost some doctors and yeah. nurses around the world. Yeah. To 73,000 people, man. Is... 73,000 people. And we've actually, what I was going to say too, was we've actually lost some doctors and nurses to self-inflicted wounds because they're, they're yeah. having such yeah. a hard time coping and, you know, and, and, and grasping it all. And I could, I can't echo what you're saying enough that, you know, we, we love those folks and it, it's important that they know that we stand by them right now. And, and I hope that, you know, we as people and governmentally, we can do what we can to take care of them at the other end of this. You know, it's, it's almost I, like being a veteran. I just want to say one more thing to the, you know, to the fans out there. Uh, just thank, thank everybody for standing by us for all these years and sticking by us and coming to see us. And that soon, we're hoping soon that this will be all over because we really enjoy everybody coming back to the ship. You know, we need we need y'all there. We need y'all there at the party because you make us. So much love. Oh, that's a great message. As uh, as everyone's become fond of saying, or should become more fond of saying, this too shall pass. We will get through this. Hopefully, we get through it bigger, better, and uh, and stronger than we were before. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this and uh, directly to everybody oh, 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 watching. Yep. Let me, ask, let me ask you a question. How long are you going to keep that beard? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you'll know, you'll know the minute quarantine's over when I come on clean faced on one of these interviews. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I have, I had one too. I just stayed for this one, for this interview. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, I said, I can't go, I can't let my fans see this. It is, yeah, I had it. But it was yeah. white. Yeah. Um, it was all great. Though. I had it was it. great. It was all white, man. I got to tell you the truth. I, I'm excited for salt and pepper. Every My wife gets in there and she's like, mm, 
you got like two. I've got one gray here and I've got <laughs> one over here. And she's like, you only got two and two doesn't, two looks bad. You got to be like full salt and pepper. No, <laughs> I don't want all the all the young people that my young fans to say, "Oh, you old." Look, I, I mean, fun. you're eighty. You've earned you've earned the right to have a salt and pepper beard, my man. <laughs> I don't feel old. Look, you don't look it. Don't you see me? You always see dark hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look good. You look good. Let's. Thank you. Uh, Let's say goodbye to our fans real quick. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We truly appreciate you once again. I am your virtual cruise host, Jason. And today I had the honor of sitting down with, from the Tramps, the founding member, Mr. Earl Young, and, of course, his beautiful wife, Sylvia. Thank you for joining us, my dear. To all Thank of you, you stay tuned into this channel. Watch YouTube. There will be more content soon. Be safe. Be healthy. Wash your hands. We'll see you again soon. Absolutely. Take care, everybody. Okay. Take care.